not guilty pleasure. Okay, is this thing on? Are we on? All right. How's everybody doing? Uh, listen, it's Sunday. The sun is shining. It's great weather. I've got to have a little bit better response than that. How is everybody doing? Better. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. I've got to push this over, right? Yay. All right, front and center. I got a good word for you guys today. I, I, I always pray, and you know, I am prophetic, not pathetic, but prophetic. So, <laughs> I uh, I always want to have a word in season for you guys. I love being with you. This is my fourth time here, and uh, I got to bring a good word, otherwise I won't be invited back, right? So, can we get a little bit more volume out of this, possibly. Check, check, check. Test one, two. Hello. Yes. All right. Good enough. Might be a little bit too hot now. Yeah, let's bring it down a little bit. All right, so let's pray first, and uh, I, I want to give you guys uh, uh, this message. Father, we just pr- I just pray for everybody here, Lord. I thank you for everybody here, everybody watching by Zoom. We got people on Zoom? Yeah, all right. So, Lord, just bless your people, Father God. I pray that you would uh, just anoint them. I pray that your word would sink in deep, Lord. I want your word. Your word is alive and active and... It's like a two-edged sword, Lord. Let it just cut through and prick the hearts of everyone who is here. Lord, we just uh, commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah, it's a little hot. Is there a handheld I can use? Check, check. All right, I like this better. We got scriptures. I got lots of scriptures for you guys today, right? God's word is awesome, so uh, let's just dive in. James, uh, if you have your Bibles, James chapter 4 is going to be the first verse. I made it easy for you guys, so you you don't have to look for, you just got to find James, that's all. (laughs) All right. Let me know when you're there. So say, I'm there. All right. Let's start uh, right off with verse 1. What is causing the, by the way, this is New Living Translation, so it's going to be a little bit different, but, and you guys can watch on the screen too. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. I'm going to stop there for a second. You know, we're Christians, we're in the house of God. I don't believe that we scheme to kill and get things, but the first part of that, you want what you don't have. We want things we don't have. Let's be real, okay? I'll give you an example. You drive down the highway, you see the, the lotto billboard, okay, side by side. It's like the lotto mega millions is 276 million, the Powerball 500 million. So you're like, Lord, just once, right? <laughs> How many, am I preaching to myself or what? Just once, God, and then we justify ourselves. We're like, okay, you know what? Just a million, you know? Just a million. And then we think about, no, they take 50% out for taxes. So, okay, maybe two million. And what I'll do is I'll tithe 200,000. I'll pay off my bills. You know, I'll put some money in the bank and I'm going to help people with it, right? We try to justify these things that we don't have, all right? You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Again, I don't believe that we are there. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. Now, here's where it starts to get real, all right? And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. Ow, that hurt, okay? Right? That hurts. It's going to hurt some more here, right? You only want what will give you pleasure. Ouch. Right? That's us. You adulterers. Ouch. It's getting real now. Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. He must have said it before, James, okay? Because I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? 
They say that God is passionate, passionate, that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. And I'm going to preface that, should be. I'm just going to hit that because we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Um, where was I? I just lost my place. All right, should be faithful to him. All right, here's where it gets good. And he gives us one of my favorite words, grace, generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud but gives grace. Everybody say grace. Grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil. All right, I'm going to stop here for one second. I love that saying. Not today, Satan. Right? Resist the devil and he will what? Flee from you. Okay? Very cool. Very cool. All right, so here's where it gets really good. And this is what I want to focus on today. This is the word that I believe that God wants us in this pandemic and that things are starting to get better. We're getting vaccines and everything, and social distancing will hopefully be a thing of the past. But verse 8, come close to God, and God will come close to you. How cool is that? That's all we got to do is come close to God. He's going to come close to us. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. Okay, so I think there's a few things we need to do in this time. You have not because you ask not. So what do we do? We ask, right? We ask. Sometimes it's just asking. A lot of times God delivers on what we ask for, doesn't he? Sometimes he doesn't. I mean, he answers prayer. Sometimes the, prayer is, the answer is no. <laughs> it's just no. All right, so um, it's great that we can ask for things. Let's take some time and focus off of us, though. All right? Let's just take some time and focus off of us and focus on other things, on godly things. All right? Matthew 6, Again, I'm out of the New Living Translation. I like this a little bit better than the NIV, okay? Because... I don't know what other versions, but it says, like, seek first the kingdom of God. I like this better, and you're going to see why. It says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. Wow. Above everything. And live righteously. And we'll, I'm going to talk about righteously. You know, the only righteousness that we have is Christ, right? So we have to abide in Christ in order to live righteously because outside of Christ, we have no righteousness. We're bad. All right, and he will give you everything. Say everything. Yes. Everything you need. Matthew 7, 7 through 11, it says, Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. My wife sent me this thing this morning, and it says, uh, The doorbell's broken, so just yell, ding dong. It's pretty funny. I was ironic that I'm preaching this today. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. All right? It says, you parents, if your child asks for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. Let me talk to you parents. I have two teenage girls. One of them just went to junior prom last night, 16 and 13. They don't ask for a loaf of bread, Okay? They ask for McDonald's. They ask for Burger King, Arby's. We have the meats. They ask for Dunkin' Donuts. They ask for Starbucks. I can't believe that I take them to Starbucks and they get a drink that costs $7. Times have changed, all right? Who can relate? Parents out there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So if you're sinful, so if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? Ask. Ask. Here's the thing we should ask for in, in, when it pertains to God. Ask for souls. Ask for souls. I work, uh, I was a full-time stand-up comedian, and then COVID hits, okay? 2020 was going to be a tremendous tour. We're going to L.A., we're going to do a show with Sharon Stone and Felicity Huffman, and then we were going to do a show uh, for the Baldwin Foundation that was going to be set up, and then COVID comes along and just ruins our tour, and 
I take a job at uh, the world's largest retailer. I'm not going to say the name. You probably already know the name. So I work with 399 other people. There are coworkers who I want to see saved. They're great people, okay? There's family members and friends you want to see saved. And I pray for souls. I'm like, God, reveal yourself to them. I pray that they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, okay? God's arm is not too short. Well, we'll take a look at Isaiah 59. 59 1. It says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. So, if that's the case, pray. It's God's will that none should perish, right? I love the story of David Berkowitz. Some of you people who are, you pretty much, there's no kids in here. So, everybody knows who David Berkowitz is, the son of Sam Killer. I remember I was a little kid when the whole thing went on signed a pact with Satan, and just went on a killing spree. I remember seeing him when they arrested him, and they showed his face in the back of that police car, and it was the face of pure evil, okay? So in prison, a man witnesses to him about Jesus. You know, I don't know the exact, all the details, but he, he witnesses to him, and, and David Berkowitz says, well, listen, first of all, I'm Jewish, and secondly, I'm a Satanist. So the guy told him, he said, call on the name of Jesus. Just call on God, and he'll reveal himself to you. So in his cell, night, uh, his cell one night, David Berkowitz says, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. And he said that he felt the presence of the Holy Spirit come into his cell, and he gave his life to the Lord. He's never getting out of prison. He's got a prison ministry. And the look on his face from then to now is literally like night and day. Totally transformed. If God can do it for him, he's no respecter of persons. He can do it for anybody. Pray for souls in this time. All right? We want to see our friends and our family and our coworkers saved. Something else you want to pray for is there's so many prayer requests. There's healings. And we're going to pray for healing at the end of uh, the service. But... You see it on Facebook. Anybody here on Facebook like me? Any Facebookers? Yeah. You see it all the time. Now, some, someone will say, some people will say, I have a, you know, a prayer request. It's, I'm not going to say what it is, but just, just pray. Some of them will just bear their souls because it's that important to them, whether it's themselves going through something physically, emotionally, mentally, a family member, whatever that is. Take time to pray, especially like when it pops right up on your, the top of your home, you know. And uh, we need signs and wonders. I love that scripture that says that these signs will follow those who believe, right? They're going to cast out demons. They're going to lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. I am believing that this year there's going to be signs and wonders and miracles. Pray for that in your prayer time. Second thing I think we need to do is we need to humble ourselves. God gives grace to the humble. I don't know about you, but I want my life marked with grace. I love it. Think about this. The creator of the universe, who knows all, sees all, wants to pour, actually, he just wants to lavish grace upon your life. And all we have to do is humble ourselves. That's it. Just humble ourselves. And what does that mean to humble ourselves? It's really just obeying God's word. That we just looked at it, submitting to God. That's it. God, I submit. You ever try to live your life on your own? I mean, I've done it before, and it's like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> just, just help me. Just, just, just come and help me, please. I give up. I give up. Uncle, just submit to God. And it's, it's, believe me, I've, I've gone through some things that are, that are tough, that are tough. Um, you know, my wife and I, um, when we got saved, when you first get saved, right, it's like uh, everything is coming up roses and, you know, your first love and, and everything is great. And then things happen. Life happens, right? I love that Duncan has this napkin. I, it's, it's on my wall on my Facebook page. It says, life happens, Duncan helps, okay? I'm a Dunkin' Donuts addict, all right? I even wrote a, a parody song about it called Dunkane. It's, it's Eric Clapton's Cocaine. Because my theory of why America runs on Dunkin', they have a little bit of cocaine in every cup of coffee, their secret ingredient, you know. Think about it. The parking lot signs, the entrance sign says, welcome back. 
exit sign says, see you soon, they know you're coming back, okay? <laughs> it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and here's your cup, crack, 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 crack. It's a Duncan dance. So, you know, my wife and I, we went through years of infertility, years, okay? So I remember when my wife took the pregnancy test, and she said, I'm pregnant, and I'm telling everybody I'm going to be a dad. And then we go in to get a sonogram, and there's no heartbeat. And it's like, whoa, whoa, that's just pretty bad. They're like, oh, it happens, whatever. So we lost one, we lost another, 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 another. And uh, I felt like a modern-day Job. I, thought, I felt like I was being put to the test, you know. We lost nine kids. And the, the, the last time that we had lost children before our two miracle babies is that uh, we were pregnant for quadruplets. We did the IVF. And they tra uh, transferred four embryos and all four took. And it was great till 19 weeks, two boys, two girls. And then uh, she started to, um, cervix starts to dilate. And then uh, we're in cross for three weeks. And then the babies are born and pass away. So we, we sang about it, you know, about uh, God giving that, that one song. It's the first time I've ever played it. But God basically um, giving you beauty for ashes and, I thought about that song, Trading My Sorrows, you know. I'm trading my sorrows for the joy of the Lord. So, uh, yeah, pressed but not crushed. We were as close to crushed as possible, okay? Persecuted, not abandoned, as close to abandoned as possible. Pressed down but not destroyed. I'm thinking we are as close to destroyed as possible. And my wife and I had this decision. It's like, do we walk away from God or do we come close to God. What do we do? So it's not easy. It's not easy to come close to God. And that's the third thing that we want to do is we want to come close to God. We want to come close. Um, there's a scripture in, in, in uh, well, we'll go over some scriptures here real quick, but 1 Samuel 36 says, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking about stoning him each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength, everybody say strength, in the Lord. Who wants strength? Who needs strength? We needed strength. We were in a chat room with people who had lost children, and uh, people were saying, how are you still standing? It's God. It's God. You know, uh, do we walk away? Do we, do we draw close? And I remember the, the disciples, they were, uh, Jesus was teaching, and, and his 12 disciples came up to him and said, your followers are leaving. He said, do you want to leave too? And Peter said, where, where do we go? You have the words of eternal life. Where do you go? Life is better with Christ. Trust me. He gave us beauty for ashes. Two miracle babies. The second, uh, the second baby Asa, my youngest, is, uh, um, you know, they're both miracle babies, but she was, um, she was of natural birth. We prayed. We're like, God, we don't have money for IBF, and, uh, but we believe we're going to have a second child. So she had, Becky had one tube. My wife had one tube removed, the right side, because she had an ectopic. She had two ectopics in the other tube, and they took those uh, pregnancies out and saved the tube. They said, your tube does not work. You cannot get pregnant the conventional way. It is impossible. Five doctors said impossible. Five doctors, when Asa was born of natural birth, said divine intervention. There's no other explanation. Divine intervention. She was born and planted into the uterus, carried 40 weeks, born, second baby. Thank you, Jesus, right? Miraculous. Miraculous. Uh, let me go to, um, to Nehemiah, Nehemiah 8, verse 10. And Nehemiah continued, well, we're going to skip down to uh, the last part of that where it says, don't be dejected and sad, for the Lord is your strength. Again, that song, Trading My Sorrows. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. Joy. There are benefits that we have when we come close to God, come close, and I will come close to you. There's strength in the presence of God. There's hope 
in the presence of God. I actually skipped a scripture. That's the one where, um, can we go back to John 6, 68? This is out of the Amplified Version. And uh, this is where Jesus, you know, said to Simon Peter, um, do you want to leave? And he said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. You are our only hope. All right? We have hope. We have grace in God's presence. Psalm 1611, this is the Amplified Version. I like the Amplified Version sometimes. It says, you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. Not joy. In your presence is fullness of joy. I always think about the Spirit of God like, you ever run the water in your sink and you look around and the sides of the sink are getting splashed, okay? I think we're getting splashed. I want to be under the flow where you get the fullness of God. All right, I, I experienced the Catholic charismatic renewal back in the late 70s where God blew in through the Catholic Church and there's speaking in tongues and laying out of hands and healings and all that kind of thing. I had never experienced that growing up as a Catholic, right? I couldn't even figure out growing up Catholic why I loved God so much and I didn't like going to church, you know? And, um, but I loved going to church then. I couldn't even wait. And then when we came to... Uh, Redeemer Church, back then it was Mount Zion Ministries in 95, it was renewal, right? With, again, the Holy Spirit blows in and there's holy laughter, okay? I never experienced that before in my life. It was awesome, Ra raising hands. And I guess that before that, the church was dead. So I told my wife, you know, I said, listen, go to the church and, you know, it's not like a Catholic church, but just go once and if you don't like it, we'll never go back. She thought everybody was crazy, she thought everybody was crazy. There were people laughing in church, and she's like, this is not normal, you know. <laughs> no, it's awesome. It's awesome, okay. And I thought it was awesome, and she, you know, God drew her. God drew her, and uh, the rest is history. But a pastor friend of mine said, you know, talking about coming close to God, a pastor friend of mine said, give God an inch, and he'll take you a mile, Okay. And I always think about like this. I think about like, you know, there's these spectrums. There's a spectrum for autism. There's a spe spectrum of, of craziness. Now, ladies, don't get mad at me. I think every woman is crazy. It's just a matter of how crazy are you. There's a spectrum. It's, it's severely crazy or it's just a little crazy, okay? But listen, the guys, I'm, I'm going to help you ladies out. All guys are jerks, okay? It's just, it's just, a, matter of, it's just a matter of where you are in the spectrum. You, are you here? Or are you there, a little bit of a jerk or whatever? Because we all are. All right. But um, there's this spectrum. It's like there is the world, you know. Well, there's the world here, and there is God. And where are we? Are we leaning towards the world, you know? Or are we leaning towards God? Where are we leaning? And giving God an inch, we want to inch closer to God. Inch, give him an inch, give him an inch. Sometimes, I'm telling you, life happens, you get beat down. I've been there. And little by little, God took us from the deepest pit, the deepest valley I could ever imagine. It's not normal to lose, to bury your kids. And uh, I remember having the service for the quads. It's not normal. This happened ever, after 9-11, and I had a lady come up to us and say, this is the saddest thing I've ever heard. And I'm like, really? 9-11, I think, was a little bit sadder, you know. But I, I get it. I get it. Inch by inch by inch, we go closer to God. We draw closer to him, and he brings us closer to him. I want to encourage you, in this time, come close to God. Come close. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you're going through, because there are so many benefits. Remember the American Express commercials? Membership has its privileges. We're members of the kingdom of God. Membership has its privileges. It really does. It really does. Also in that scripture, Psalm 16, 11, in your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I want fullness of grace. And you know what you get when you get fullness of, of grace? Because, um, or, I'm sorry, yeah, fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. So the joy of the Lord is your strength. Fullness of joy, you get fullness of strength. All right? And it happens by getting into God's presence. So, I think um, 
what I want to do is I, I, I want to give an altar call. And you can just rate where you are in your seats, rate watching on Zoom. I don't know if anybody's tuning in. I don't know if you're new here. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know if, where you are in your walk. But I just want to just renew your commitment with God. Just renew it. All right? So let's just pray. Just repeat after me. Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. And I just ask you to wash me of all my sins. I ask you to cleanse me in your righteousness. And I thank you that all my sins are forgiven. They're as far as the east is from the west. And Lord, I come to you confessing Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and fill me afresh. Fill me in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to pray for people who are sick, who are going through things. I don't know, you know, physically, you got loved ones, whatever, you can stand in the gap for them. But I honestly, I'm gonna, I pray every service because we have not because we ask. We don't, we don't ask. We ask not. So I just pray, Father God, anybody have like a, you don't have to say it, whatever. Anybody have a need, just raise your hand. I'll just pray for you. Father God, I just pray, Lord, right now, these needs that are set before you, God, you know them. And Lord, if it's healing, God, I ask for your touch, your healing touch, Father God. Lord, 2,000 years ago, you went to the cross, Jesus. You took those lashes, and I declare that by your stripes, these people are healed. They were healed then, and we just receive Calvary. The sacrifice that you made, the healing you provided. Lord, if it's a, a mental or a physical, uh, psychological need, Lord, emotional need, God, whatever that is, Lord, I ask that you would intervene, Lord. I pray divine intervention into their lives, Father God. Lord, miracles, Lord. I pray that signs and wonders would follow us that, that believe you, Father God. I ask you for signs and wonders and miracles today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. I appreciate you guys having me. And uh, have a great Sunday. Enjoy the weather. All right? God bless you guys.